I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today, we're going to work on building a custom family coat of arms in Inkscape. And my intention is to go through a medley of skills. So this is an example of the Johansson coat of arms, but this is representative of my family. So I have my wife in this quadrant, my daughter, my son, and me, the Inkscape logo. So we'll start off by making the shield and then we'll colorize it with different quadrants. And then I'll go through some, some cool skills on how to make these little icons from scratch. And then we'll cheat on the last one just to uh, speed things up. And we're not gonna build the banner because nobody came here to learn how to type. Let's begin. So go ahead and grab your Bezier pen tool and we're gonna start by making one half of the shield and then we're gonna reflect it. So if you hold control, it'll help you make a straight line and just put together a triangle. It can be in exact right now. That needs some more stroke. So if you want your fill and stroke menu, it's this paintbrush in the corner up here. I have mine open, so I'll go to just 2.0 millimeters. That's just a random number so you can see it better. We're gonna get rid of the stroke later. And this is gonna become half of the shield. If you go to edit paths by node, now you can pull your shield to any proportion you want. So this is preference. You can make it like a heart shape. You can make it more triangular. Let's just try it uh, pretty, just eyeballing it here. And then if you wanna make the height taller, go back to select and then you can pull it up. Right there is pretty good. If you click on the node, it'll give you these handles. And then you can, like if you like that look right there, like a vase or a vase. Um, I kind of like it just plain, at least for this tutorial. We'll stop right there. And now you're gonna wanna reflect it. So first do control D, that just duplicates it. They're sitting on top of each other so you can't see it yet. And then this left and right arrow, that's gonna flip it the top one horizontally. And then there you go, you got two of them. And now you just pull it. This little icon here, this magnet thing with the electricity, snap nodes, paths, click that, and that will help the two sides find each other. See, just snap right in. And do I like my shield? It's too short. So group the whole thing, just grab a rectangle around it all, control G, then you can make it taller. And that's pretty good right there. Good, it's a good looking shield. I'm gonna make a second one because I want one to be the outside black border that you see here. So the whole thing selected, control D, then pull this one over here and then just fill down here, fill, make the whole thing black. We'll come back to this. And I want this piece here. I'm gonna duplicate it so you can see the steps as we go along. So now let's colorize it. I'm gonna try to copy what I had before. I'm gonna have one side yellow. So I will now click off and just collect one side. See how it's one size highlighted? And then go, where my colors go? Down here, my colors, I like that yellow right there. And then click the other side. And I'm gonna make that like a nice navy blue. The Swedish colors are close enough. That's not what I want. That's good, right there. Okay, so I have my two different sides, but how do I make the quadrants? Let's duplicate the whole thing. So grab the whole thing, then control D. And I'm gonna put them side by side. Now there's a tool that's gonna to help us line it up properly. So click on one of them, then shift, click on the other, and then go to your align and distribute. It's this bars up here. And then if you have relative to last selected, and then this one where the arrow's pointing up, it's gonna do it on the vertical axis there. So now they're lined up and we need it that way because now we're gonna make a new rectangle. And I'm gonna to try to do it around the middle, but it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And just for to avoid confusion, we'll make that a new color. We'll make it like a random. I like to make my clipping shapes green, just so I always know it's, I don't usually make green designs. So we'll go back to fill and stroke. We'll go to the fill. And then this right here, you can change the opacity. And then when you have it set where you want it, we don't want the stroke around our box. This is gonna be our clipping box. We're gonna clip out part of it. So stroke, go to nothing. And then <laughs> watch this trick. So click on the box, then just click on one of your shields. Then go to object, clip, set. 
Now we've got to bring that one to the top. So we're going to make it, in the, these are the hierarchy. It's at the very top. Then watch this. Flip it like we did before. And it's going to snap right into place. It's pretty cool. And there you go. You got your, your checkerboard shield. And let's go ahead and group this whole thing. So control G, then duplicate. Because I'm, I'm going to show you all the steps as we go along. So this is the one we'll keep working on. And this one will go over here. And then I think I got the... The colors backwards though we have yeah I want blue in the upper right hand corner so simple fix just grab the whole thing again and then this is like a very it's like the MVP of the tutorial this flip selected objects there it goes okay we got it we got it where we want it and then now it's time now remember this is a family coat of arms just for fun starting a new tradition and so this so ladies first I'm doing my wife first we'll do some beautiful flowers she does arrangements and things and I'll show you, we're gonna make a simple vector flower from scratch using one of the path effects tool that's, that's uh, pretty cool. So if I can drive, let's get back to some empty space. Now do not judge my hand drawing skills because the Inkscape's gonna do all the hard work. So go ahead and grab your Bezier pen and join me in drawing a flower. So this is gonna be very rudimentary and then we're gonna have one of the path effects make the full flower. This is one petal. So just draw a wide petal with a small base. Just anything you like, just super easy. And that is a beautiful petal, but wait till you see, the Inkscape does all the, the magic there. So let's make our stroke a little bit bigger. So select the item, our petal. <laughs> we'll go a little bit wider. We'll go 2.5 random. And here's our petal, but it, it we can't make it this big. <laughs> Excuse me. Inkscape is serious business. So choose your edit paths by node. And then let's make this look more like a flower. So we'll add a little bit of beauty to it. All I'm doing is pulling out the side so it looks more petal-like. And this part will come in and I like it. That's good right there. Actually, to make the effect work better, I want to add a thin, thin base of the petal. So you can actually double click in between two nodes and it makes a new one. I'm just wanna, I just wanna move this part down just to create a thin stem part of the petal like that. So again, you don't have to make it anything like, actually try to make it a more beautiful petal. And then to, to, to see what this path effect is going to do, I'm going to add some color. I'm going to add some pink, and I'll keep the stroke. It's going to be a white flower in the end, but this way you can see what's happening. Before we go on, there's an important step. Some of the like the path effects, for instance, sometimes the features don't work when you're trying to play around with Inkscape because there's a difference between a path and an object. So right now, this is an object. So click on your object. Then before we move on, go to Object to Path. And that will allow us to use the path effects. So then now go to path, path effects, and then see the pluses here in your menu, it pops up. Now we can actually do the, um, the thing. So we go to down here, wherever it is, rotate copies, click on that. And it's all bunched up, but don't worry. But let me walk you through. On the menu here, we're on normal for the method, number of copies, six, to show you the difference is eight. But we're gonna straighten this out so it has an actual look, the look of a flower. Starting angle should be zero, rotation angle 60 is default, the gap don't worry about, and then before we go to the XY axis, distribute evenly needs to be checked, but uncheck mirror copies and split elements. So the with the X and the Y axis, that's how you can make it actually expand, but there is a cheat, and we're gonna do it that way. So if you've selected your flower, go to edit paths by node, and then don't worry about all these nodes over here. Just ignore those. Just get the center node and pull it out. And you see where we're going with this. So now we have our petals more evenly spaced. And if you actually physically rotate it, like I'm just spinning it myself, you can pull your flower together. So right there. And I want, see how they're overlapping a little bit? Now there's other, th you can spin it that way, but um, these nodes are from the original petal. So if we can find the one right there, 
any of these would work, but that I just need to have separation between the pedals. But just to show you, you can you can play with it um, as long as you want, really. But let's just go with something simple. What do these do? That's nice. That's a beautiful flower. But it's squished. Squishing it is easy. Just go back to just regular select and then just flatten it. And there is your flower. It needs the center part. I don't know what that's called technically. But we will make it, we'll call it circle. The, the flower's circle. It's got a weird stroke. This whole thing's going to become white. But I'm going to keep it pink for now so we can see it. I know this is, this is messed up. But it, this is meant to be like... Um, an interpretation of a flower and can be part of a pattern on our shield. So click off the whole thing, grab the whole flower, then control G for group. And then you can resize it. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome for a quick little flower we made in two seconds there. So now I can put it onto, look out, look out, this is going to be a great family shield here. So just make the first one the size you want. We'll call it that. I think I'll try and make it white now. Right there. Control D duplicates it. Control D. Control D. They're too big. Control D. Don't worry, watch this trick. So I space it out. They're a little too big. I'll just... Um, Rather than do the group, because I don't want to pull apart part of my shield, I've got one selected, shift, just click all of them, and then control G that, and then you can just shrink the whole thing. So, not bad. They're not perfectly spaced, but there's your flowers. There's, there's my wife. I, I like the look at that. I like it. I like that a lot. We're done with my wife. Now it's time for my daughter. We'll do some music notes and I'll start to speed this up. Music notes, the flower was the big main event, but the music notes, you can you can go as um, technical as you want. I just got my circle. I'm going to pull out a circle, make that black. And then the music notes, yeah, they're always kind of like tilted. And then you get the rectangle, pull a rectangle down. And if that's all you want to do, you're done. But I want to get fancy. So remember how I made my pedal and everybody was like, Pedals in the suck. It ended up being okay. Just, oh, I got the wrong one. Get your Bezier tool. And then this is going to be the top of the note that has that squiggle. So just make the, the points you're going to use. So there's my points. That's all I've got. Very random. I'll make the fill and stroke easier. There's just the stroke a little bit wider so you can see it. And then go back to your edit paths by node. And then it kind of has this like, oh, see that? See how it like snapped? Anytime it starts to snap on, you don't want it. Get rid of the magnet with the electricity there. And then it lets you be a little bit more, um, less precise. So that is like, um, has jagged edges. So one way you can do it is select one of them. And then this minus, you can get rid of it. And then I'm, I get rid of both of them. And then now with these handles, I'll just really give it some, it came out, came out pretty well. So then fill it with the, with the black and see what we did there? That was a quick little music note. That could have been its own tutorial. We stuck it on the family shield one and pop that baby on there. There's your music note. Grab the whole thing. Control G for group. And it's too big. Control D. Control D. I'm just making the group right there. And then I will grab all of them. Control G. And I want them to be black. So that's the right color. I'm just I'm just fitting it into place. So for my 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 daughter went so fast. That was easy. Okay, so we have mother and daughter. Now for son. He likes science, so let's make an atom. So grab the circle and ellipsis tool and then just pull one out. This was already preset, but if you didn't have it, you can turn off the fill and just have the stroke. And we wanted that. Yeah, that's about right. And then we'll keep the center one, control D for duplicate. And then back to this menu, the all-star menu. This one right here, the, the right angle rotate selection. That'll make it go sideways, duplicate that. Give it some 
what are these things? The electron paths? The electron paths. Shift, group. All I've done is make my electron paths. And then, is that how it looks? Is that what an atom looks like? No, because it needs a nucleus. So we'll choose the circle and ellipse tool, shift, control. There's your nucleus. Pop these in place, put the nucleus in there. And then just to make sure it's all aligned, you can push shift and collect everything. And I'll go to align and distribute center. Molecular atom complete. Group it, pull it into place. Got some funky colors going on. We'll fix that in a second. All right, so we'll put this bigger one on the bottom. And I want all of the stroke to be white and have a higher weight. So we'll go back to fill and stroke, stroke style. Try white and maybe a little bit more weight, maybe 3.0. Have to fix the nucleus, so control, actually go to object, ungroup, then I can click off of everything, grab just the nucleus, and then make that whole thing white. I'll regroup it carefully, so I'll click the electron paths and the nucleus, control G, control D to duplicate, and now I've got my son, his quadrant, is complete, which leaves me. So let's just zoom out a little bit. And we've got my wife, my daughter, my son, maybe space that a little better. And for each quadrant, for the icons and each family member or whatever, you don't need to always make everything from scratch. Maybe there's some things you wanna, you already have a graphic for, or you can pull in some clip art that would um, work. And that's what I'm gonna do for me. So for, for me, I'm doing the Inkscape logo. So I'm just pulling in a PNG so I have it embedded from file, we'll do none for image rendering, then okay. And there it is. And this is a quick way, we've done it in a different tutorial. I'm just gonna do a trace bitmap. So I go to path, trace bitmap, and this menu bar comes up. I'm gonna do the quickest, dirtiest, easiest way under single scan, auto trace, update, and then just call it a day. Now I have a transparent scalable vector but it needs to be black. So I changed the fill to black. And in my example, I created a white snow cap to the mountain here, but we're gonna skip that. So let's just scale it into place and look at what we have here. We have my unofficial family coat of arms we created in Inkscape. And actually, I think we we're gonna put the border behind it. So this is just an extra step. If you want to slide a border underneath it, you can just have a little bit extra um, contrast against whatever you are displaying this on. So let's bring it up against the, the, the demo that I made earlier off camera and then see how close we came. Okay, actually it looks like we forgot the shadow. If you wanna see that bonus tip, if you wanna see the shadow, get out the Bezier pen and then same as before, just, just keep it real basic and what I'll do is I'm going to then go to edit nodes and then just create like a little bit of area that would be shadowed. You get the picture. And then what we'll do is we'll go to fill. Black is good, but then we'll make it uh, transparent just to give it a little bit of shading and then get rid of the stroke. See? So, and then I would, I'd fine tune that, but let's just zoom in on this one then. So anyway, this is what you can make for your family using any icons you want. Um, if you don't have four people, you can make it a, a two sided shield. You can do a one shield. You can put your monograms on there, anything you want. Just have fun with it and thanks.